I am determined to ruin Brianna's marriage by any means necessary. It bothers me that my friends and relatives are happily married while I, who have never married, am constantly judged for having kids outside of wedlock. Honestly, I believe Baron, my cousin Brianna's husband, is an impressive catch. Just think about how I would feel if a man of Baron's social standing, stature, exceptional looks, power, influence, and not to mention his current net worth in the hundreds of millions, showed interest in me. It would be a monumental achievement, and if he were to choose me over Brianna, it would highlight my superiority. In order to compete with Brianna, I realize I need a makeover. If I am to capture the attention of such a man, I must present myself at my absolute best. Hiring an image consultant is crucial for a complete transformation. I don't know any image consultants but my sister Tashel's friend works for an international image consultancy firm, I better contact Tashel. Brianna and Baron, be prepared, I am determined to make my move. Hey sweet little sister Tashel, hope you're doing well. Listen, I need the contact number for your friend at the international image consultancy firm. I'm thinking of a makeover. Oh, sure any. I'll text you the details. Why do you need a makeover? I think you look great. No reason. It's one of those things. I think a makeover will lift my mood. But, can we catch up soon? I need your advice on something too. Alright, let's meet at our favorite cafe at 10 a.m. Great. Hi sweet young sis, I'm all ears, what's on your mind? Well, you know how my in-laws keep dropping by unannounced, and our niece, Rachel, has been staying with us because her parents are going through a rough patch. Oh, that sounds tough. You need to set boundaries, Tashel. It's your space, your life. Also, Rachel might be having an affair with your husband Bobby, have you thought of that? Or her parents want to entice your husband with Rachel. She is very beautiful after all. I think Rachel's parents want to use her to take over that lovely house of yours, the house that you built with Bobby. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. It's just getting overwhelming, you know. Totally get it. You need to take a stand. Make them realize it's your home, not a hotel. Kick them out if you have to. You think so? Absolutely. It's about time you put your foot down. Don't let them walk all over you. Don't let them take over your home, your man, your husband's money, or destroy your marriage. Unbeknownst to Tashel, it is envious of her happy marriage. You're right, Innie. I needed to hear that. Thanks for understanding. Always here for you, sis. Let me know how it goes, and don't forget to send me that contact number. Gotta work on my makeover, you know. Sure thing, Innie. Thanks again for the advice. Innie persistently attempts to visit Brianna, who, cognizant of Innie's malevolence, deliberately avoids her. In a desperate maneuver, Innie reaches out to Brianna's husband. Baron, feigning a longing for Brianna and proposing daily lunch gatherings at their home, chauffeured in Baron's luxurious cars as he commutes home. Innie asserts a desire to relish Brianna's delectable home-cooked meals, but in truth, her intention is to destroy Brianna's marriage. Despite Baron's initial reluctance, Innie persists, leading to Baron surprising Brianna with the impending lunch visits. <laughs> so different, one would mistake you for one of your daughters. Oh, thank you Senator Barron. I was in the neighborhood so I thought I'd pass by and say hi. Also, I would like to remind you that I will be joining you for lunch at your place daily from now onwards. We all know that you drive or are chauffeur driven home daily for lunch. I don't know, let me talk to Bree about this first. No, let it be a surprise. All right then, you are her cousin sister after all. Hello, Brianna my love. 
Hello my love, your excellency, the most highly favored and righteous man amongst his peers, the one who greatly prospers in all he does, the wisest one, the wealthiest one, the one they all look up to, the greatest one, the one who has kings bowing down at his feet, and who defeats all of his enemies by God's grace. Speak your highness, your one true love, that woman that you are faithful to and who is faithful to you, your beloved is listening. Amen. I love it when you answer my calls like that. My queen, all of my blessings are yours. Listen babe, I wanted to let you know that I'll be bringing a visitor home for lunch for the next few months. She misses you and thought it would be nice to spend some time together. Oh, that's sweet of her. Who's the visitor? It's your cousin, Innie. She wanted to surprise you and catch up on old times. Innie, well, that's unexpected. Why didn't she just tell me herself? She thought it would be a fun surprise. Is it okay if she joins us for lunch? Sure. Baron, if it means that much to her, I suppose it's fine. She's looking forward to it. See you at home. You have changed so much since we last met a few months ago, Innie. It's like you're someone else. Oh, it's nothing. What a beautiful and grand mansion you have here. Thank you. I give God all the glory. Innie, this is unexpected. What brings you here? Just missed my dear cousin and thought Baron's chauffeured rides deserved some company. Again, what a lovely home you have. I wish I lived here. Innie. Let's hope this visit is pleasant. Oh, it will be, Brianna. It will be. Dear Lord, I come before you in this moment of unease. Please, protect my home and family from any evil schemes. I feel a darkness around Innie, and I pray that you nullify all her wicked plans. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brianna, darling, why the long face? It's just family catching up. Of course. Inny, I'm just surprised by the sudden visit. Excuse me for a moment. Lord, you know the darkness that surrounds Inny. Please, shield my family from any harm she may bring. Destroy and nullify the plans of the devil, especially those woven by Inny's malicious intentions. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. As Brianna prays fervently, the scene is set for a silent battle between good and evil within the walls of the mansion. Inny, it was nice catching up. I hope you enjoy your stay in the city. Oh, I'm sure I will, Brianna. Your hospitality is truly heartwarming. Inny, a word of caution. I pray that only goodness comes from your visit. Any ill intentions will not go unnoticed by the Lord, and he will surely fight for me. Brianna, always the warrior. Don't you worry. I'm here for family, nothing else. Brianna, you're underestimating me. Your warning won't stop my plans. Innie decides to change her strategy, opting for a more seductive approach to get closer to Baron. If I can't break them apart from the outside, maybe I can do it from within. Time to turn up the charm. A few days later. So, Innie, how's everything going for you in the city? It's been quite the experience, Baron. Especially with you driving me around in these luxurious cars. Glad you're enjoying the rides. It's just temporary until the chauffeur is back. Baron, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I can't deny my feelings any longer. Feelings? Yes, Baron. I've developed strong feelings for you. I can't help but be drawn to your charm, your wealth, everything. I think we should have an affair, just between us. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty, but I can't entertain such thoughts. I'm committed to Brianna, and I won't betray her trust. Baron, don't pretend you're not tempted. I can see the desire in your eyes. Innie, it's a lie. You're only seeing what you want to see. You're trying to force matters. I won't jeopardize my marriage. I suggest we keep things professional and respect the boundaries. If that's what you want, Baron. But deep down, I know you feel the connection between us. I am going to stop the car, I can't stand all of this nonsense. Innie, I appreciate your honesty, but I won't entertain thoughts of an affair. 
I'm committed to Brianna. Baron, you're in denial. You can't deny the connection between us. Inny, it's not about denial. It's about commitment and loyalty. Brianna is my wife, and I won't betray her. Most importantly, I won't disobey the Lord. If you want to take me to Hades with you for adultery, Inny, you have failed. I cancel all of your evil plots and plans in Jesus' name. Baron, you don't deserve someone like Brianna. She never went to high school, and I have a degree from overseas. I've made it on my own, not depending on anyone. Really? Didn't your parents see you through high school? Didn't someone or our taxes pay for your scholarship to study overseas? Didn't your parents pay for your air ticket? Need I go on? Inny, education and wealth don't define a person. Brianna's heart and wisdom are priceless. It's not her fault she was born into a poor family. What matters is that she rose above it. Well, I don't need a man to provide for me. I can survive on my own unlike Brianna who needs you and your company to survive. For your information, Brianna and I built this company together. Also, we are one hence, everything I have is hers and vice versa. Most importantly, we rely on the Lord Jesus Christ for all of our needs, he is our provider. Innie, stop putting down Brianna. It's not attractive, and I won't tolerate it. If you can't respect my wife, I suggest you find your way back to your house. What? If you're going to continue speaking ill of Brianna, I can't have you in my car. She's my wife, and I won't let anyone disrespect her. Fine, maybe I'm better off without your daily rides anyway. I think it's time we stop these daily lunches, Innie. It's inconveniencing me, my chauffeur, and most importantly, Brianna. I hope you understand. So, you're serious about leaving me out here? You're an independent woman and a big girl, I am sure you will find your way home. I won't let someone who takes away my peace, and who disrespects my wife, to ride in my car. In his failed plan to seduce Baron leaves her embarrassed and hurt. In an attempt to salvage her pride, she spreads false accusations about Brianna trying to hurt her. However, Baron's loyalty to his wife prevails, straining their familial relationship. In these attempts to tarnish Brianna's name fail, as people are drawn to her due to Baron's wealth. Ultimately, Innie accepts defeat after realizing her destructive actions backfired. How did it all go so wrong? Baron doesn't want me, and he doesn't find me attractive. Feeling embarrassed and hurt, Innie decides to play the victim and tarnish Brianna's reputation. You won't believe what Brianna did. She tried to feed me spoiled food, and when I confronted her, she denied it and told Baron. Now, he doesn't pick me up for lunch anymore. Really, Brianna is so generous, why would she do that? I heard Baron is quite protective of Brianna. I am sure there's some misunderstanding somewhere. Bri wouldn't hurt a fly. Maybe trying to ruin Brianna's name wasn't the best idea. People see through the lies, and Baron values his wife too much to believe them. Left feeling defeated and with strained familial relationships, Innie grudgingly accepts the consequences of her misguided actions. The mansion, the luxury cars, the prestige, the powerful senator and businessman, the hundreds of millions of dollars. I got none of that. Innie, you have failed in this game of life. You could entrap a man like Baron, a man who would have changed your destiny. Surely, you have failed. Ziggy, my son, I can't believe you're leaving again. We need to find a way to make this work. Dad, we've tried, but we're like oil and water. I need space, and I can't stay here any longer. You're my son. I can't just let you go like this. It's for the best, Dad. I've decided to go live with Mom in her country. I studied there hence, it will be easier for me to find work there plus. In my opinion, the economy in Mom's country is now a million times better than this country's economy. Also, I hope to find some peace there because from a young age, I have never known peace in this house. Go if you want to, I won't force you to stay. You have always been mummy's boy. Let's see if your mother, Carolina, will be able to accommodate you.
Attention, everyone, I have an important announcement. Ziggy has officially broken all ties with Barkley and is now residing with Carolina. I've ensured that the family cuts off all connections with Ziggy. This leaves Barkley and Jerissa as the potential heirs to Dad's property. We'll see about that. I take care of Dad hence, I should inherit this house, the lands and all of Dad's assets. This can't be good. I believe it's time for a change. Barkley, you and Jerissa will be under my guidance from now on. Dad, we can't let this happen. Barkley nods solemnly as in his plan to control the family unfolds. A few weeks later. This place is beautiful, Ahana. Jerissa, welcome to my mom and dad's estate in Montserrat. Since I am Brianna and Baron's child, and you are Barclay's child, and our grandmothers were siblings, it makes us cousins. Yes. Thank you for taking me in for a few months while I do my course. It's the least I can do. Good evening, Jerissa. I've been praying for discernment, and I sense an unusual presence around you. Hello, Ahana. That's interesting. I don't feel anything unusual. I believe it's spiritual. Let's pray for protection. Lord, shield us from any evil influences in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Days later, Ahana wakes Jerusa from a nightmare. Jerusa, your nightmares suggest a deeper spiritual struggle. Have you considered seeking deliverance through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You can receive your deliverance through God's word in the name of Jesus. Just believe and you will receive. I've tried everything, but the nightmares won't stop. Every night I get terrible nightmares where I see myself being chased, falling into pits and being cut. It's frightening Ahana. Deliverance requires surrender. Forsake all other gods, commit your life to Christ, and obey him. No more affairs. I can't give up my relationships, Ahana. I'll try, but no promises. Jerissa, soul ties can be destructive. Seek forgiveness, turn to God, and genuinely surrender. I'll try, but I can't cut ties completely. What? Stop sinning, stop fornicating, break all soul ties. It's crucial for your deliverance, Jerissa. It saddens me to know that you aren't willing to fully commit to God's ways, but I'll keep praying for you. Hello, Ahana speaking. Ahana, it's your aunt Carolina. I know it's been decades since we last spoke. How have you been? I am fine. I wanted to thank you for taking care of Jarissa. It's been a relief knowing she's in good hands there in Montserrat. Aunt Carolina, I can't ignore the sadness in your voice and the intense negative energy around you. What happened? You used to be so lively and kind. It's a tangled mess, Ahana. Family feuds, property disputes, my sisters in law are making my life a nightmare. Even after I left everything behind, I have never known any peace. Decades later, I am still struggling with mental health issues. After the conversation, Ahana seeks guidance from the Lord. Lord, I have never sensed this much evil around a person. The malevolent spirits seem to have taken total control of Aunt Carolina, she's now a shadow of herself. Some really bad spirits hover around her. It appears that she has accepted her current condition, and she's struggling to break free from bondage. Lord, what happened to Carolina? Why is she surrounded by such darkness? This is what I am hearing in my heart, her sisters-in-law seek to destroy her. It's about property, control, and preventing Barclay's happiness. They don't want anyone in the family to be joyful. It's greed, generational spirits, generational curses, jealousy caused by malevolent spirits, and Aunt Carolina has spoken, believed and rendered herself powerless under those spirits. I need to intercede by fasting and praying for her. 
Isaiah 10 27 KJV says, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I exhort therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, be made for all men. Lord, I will intercede for Carolina and her family. Guide me in my prayers. I will also contact all of the genuine believers that I know and ask them to pray for Carolina as well. I will arrange to meet some of them in person as soon as possible. Thank you for joining me as we intercede for my Aunt Carolina in prayer. If you can, please meditate on Psalm 103, 3, Jeremiah 17, 14, Psalm 107, 20, and Isaiah 46, 4, night and day for a week, and join me as we fast and pray fervently for her for three days. We can only have one meal, breakfast, a day for those three days and take liquids throughout the day. Feel free to fast in a way that you are most comfortable with. Right. Psalm 103, 3 KJV says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, Jeremiah 17 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed, save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Psalm 107, 20 says, He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. And, Isaiah 46, 4 N. I, V says, even to your old age and gray hairs I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you, I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Amen, amen, let us pray. Almighty and sovereign God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace, invoking the power of intercession on behalf of our dear sister Carolina. We stand in the gap, Recognizing the battles she faces against malevolent spirits, generational curses, and limiting mindsets that seek to hinder her from the abundant life you have promised. In accordance with your word, we declare in faith that, the Lord is faithful, he will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one, 2 Thessalonians 3, 3. We rebuke every demonic influence and break the chains of generational curses, knowing that, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law Galatians 3:13. Father, we pray for a spirit of repentance to sweep over Carolina's heart, that she may turn from any sinful ways and find forgiveness through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant her the strength to renounce all ungodly relationships, whether they be friendships or family ties, that do not align with your will. Your word reminds us, bad company corrupts good character, 1 Corinthians 15:33, and we ask for the courage to sever ties that hinder her spiritual growth. We beseech you, Lord, to break every limiting mindset that hinders Carolina from fully embracing the freedom you offer. May she be transformed by the renewing of her mind, Romans 12, 2, and come to understand the fullness of your love, grace, and purpose for her life. Father, draw Carolina into a personal and intimate relationship with you. May she seek your face earnestly, for your word assures us that, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Open her eyes to your truth and let your Holy Spirit guide her steps. We pray all these things with unwavering faith, believing that nothing is impossible for you, our omnipotent God. In Jesus' mighty name, we intercede, trusting that your will be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you for agreeing with me in prayer, Lynette. I appreciate it. May the Lord bless and keep you always. Amen. More blessings to you too, Ahana. Thank you. Three days later, after fasting and praying, Ahana has a vision. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Last night, in a dream or was it a vision, I saw you pull Carolan out of darkness into your glorious light. I give you all of the praise and glory. Surely, there's power in the name of Jesus Christ to break every chain. Also, there's power in intercessory prayers. I declare that Carolina's deliverance shall be permanent in Jesus' name. In her gratitude, Ahana questions the extent of Jairus' deliverance. Despite her hope, Ahana senses a different truth. Lord, does Carolina's deliverance mean Jerissa is also free? 
Sadly, Jerissa's mindset remains fixed on worldly things. Her father's influence has spoiled her. Even if she were delivered, she might relapse into old habits, attracting even worse demons. It will take time for her to change her ways. I hope she will open her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. Miles away in another country, Carolina feels a sudden urge to seek the Lord. She immerses herself in Christian content. Lord, guide me with all my heart. She delves into Christian films, sermons, and testimonies, seeking solace and understanding. At the park, something changes. The heaviness is gone. I can pray and read the Bible. Make things right for me and my children, Lord. Bring peace to our lives. It's very early in the morning and there's no one else in the park. I think I can pray here instead of praying in my shared living space. Gracious and merciful Father, I come before you in humble reverence, acknowledging your sovereignty and seeking your divine presence. Your word teaches us in Psalm 103, 8 that, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I stand upon this promise, knowing that your mercy is boundless. I confess, Lord, the mistakes and shortcomings of my past. Your word reminds me in 1 John 1, 9 that, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I lay before you every burden, every sin, and every transgression, asking for your forgiveness. I repent, O oh God, turning away from the paths that led me astray. Your word assures us in Acts 3.19, Repent therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. I turn back to you, seeking the cleansing power of your grace. Lord Jesus, I declare my need for deliverance. Your word declares in Galatians 5, 1 that, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I declare my freedom in you, breaking every chain that binds me. Guide me, Heavenly Father, in the way of your will. Proverbs 3, 5-6 instructs us to, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. I submit my plans, my desires, and my life to your sovereign guidance. I seek your divine protection, O Lord. Psalm 91, 4 assures us that, He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings, you will find refuge, his faithfulness is a shield and buckler. I trust in your protective wings, knowing that your faithfulness surrounds me. Grant me, O Lord, a new lease of life. 2 Corinthians 5:17 declares, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. I claim this promise, embracing the newness you offer. Break every chain that ties me to the past, O oh God. Isaiah 43, 18-19 encourages us, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I perceive it, Lord, and I step into the newness of your grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayers. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the peace that fills my heart. I pray for your guidance as Ziggy is moving in with me. Please help us find suitable accommodation and bless him with a great, well-paying job. Meanwhile, Ziggy arrives in the country and stays with friends while his mother searches for a place. Lord, lead me to the right place for us. After diligent search, Carolina finds a small apartment. Lord, thank you for this place. I trust in your provision. Thank you, Lord, for the peace that fills my heart. I pray for your guidance as Ziggy is moving in with me. Please help us find suitable accommodation and bless him with a great, well-paying job. In Jesus' name I pray. Ziggy moves into the apartment with his mother grateful for the new chapter ahead. Meanwhile, back at Kinnan's house. Guess what, Innie, Irie, my beloved husband, 
Bobby, surprise me with this. She reveals a set of car keys, grinning proudly. Innie and Ira force smiles. Wow, Tashel, that's incredible. Congrats. So happy for you, sis. Thanks, guys. Isn't it amazing? Absolutely, Tashel. Your life is like a fairy tale. Couldn't be happier for you. Tashel notices the forced enthusiasm, but chooses to ignore it, oblivious to the hidden jealousy. You both should come for a ride sometime. Sure, we'd love that. I feel so blessed. Bobby's been amazing. Hum. As Tashel excitedly talks about her wonderful life, Innie and Irie exchange subtle glances, brewing envy. We can't let her have it all. Bobby's the catch here. Exactly. We deserve some of that happiness too. We'll both go after Bobby and allow him to choose between us. Or we can both date him. Maybe he'll opt to spoil and marry all three of us. What? Little do they know, Innie and Irie's envy is turning into a dangerous scheme, threatening to shatter the happiness Tashel holds dear. The scenes depict a journey of spiritual awakening, repentance, and seeking God's guidance in the face of challenges. Here are the lessons learned in concluding remarks. 1. Spiritual Discernment Ahana's ability to discern spiritual influences highlights the importance of spiritual discernment in navigating life's challenges. 2. Intercession and Prayer Ahana's commitment to intercede for others demonstrates the power of prayer and fasting in seeking divine intervention and deliverance. 3. Family Dynamics and Struggles The struggles within Karalana's family illustrate the impact of family feuds, property disputes, and control issues on individuals' lives. 4. Seeking God wholeheartedly, Karalana's decision to seek the Lord wholeheartedly through prayer, Bible study, and spiritual content reflects the transformative power of a sincere pursuit of God. 5. Forgiveness and repentance, the scenes emphasize the importance of confessing sins, repenting, and seeking forgiveness as fundamental steps toward spiritual healing and deliverance. 6. God's guidance and protection, trusting in God's guidance and seeking his protection is evident throughout the narrative, reinforcing the scriptural principle of acknowledging God in all aspects of life. 7. Freedom from the past, the vision of Karalana being pulled from darkness into the light signifies the freedom one can experience by turning to God and breaking free from the chains of the past. And 8. New beginnings. The concluding scene represents a new beginning for Karalana and Ziggy, emphasizing the theme of God's provision and the hope found in trusting his guidance. The narrative underscores the transformative power of faith, prayer, and seeking God's will in the midst of life's challenges. It emphasizes the importance of forgiveness, repentance, and trusting in God's guidance for a new and hopeful future. The story encourages a reliance on spiritual discernment and underscores the redemptive journey that can occur when individuals turn to God wholeheartedly. Thank you for watching this episode of Karalana. Watch out for the next episode. If you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to get notified about new content. Before we conclude, here are some verses from the King James Version of the Holy Bible for you to ponder on. Romans 8 26 to 27 KJV says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8 28 to 30 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover whom he did predestinate, 
them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans 8 31 to 32 says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I exhort therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, be made for all men. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If a science 6.18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching the runta with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Colossians 1, 9-10 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Romans 8 26-27 says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in humility and gratitude, acknowledging your sovereignty and the grace you have bestowed upon us through Christ. Your word teaches us the importance of intercessor or prayer, and we stand before you, interceding on behalf of others in the body of Christ. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters in faith, asking for your guidance, strength, and provision in their lives. May they be filled with the knowledge of your will and walk in wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let your light shine through them, impacting the world around them for your glory. We pray for those who are in need, those facing challenges, and those who may be wandering away. Draw them close to you, Father, and surround them with your love and grace. May our prayers be like a sweet fragrance before you, pleasing and acceptable. Lord, we intercede for the unity and well-being of the body of Christ. Help us to bear one another's burdens, to love unconditionally, and to be a reflection of your love on earth. May our interactions be marked by kindness, compassion, and a genuine concern for each other's spiritual growth. We are grateful, Father, for the assurance that even when we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us according to your will. Thank you for the comfort of knowing that you hear our prayers and work all things together for good. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.